Hello. So, I have had a number of requests to go over some of the common imaging findings in patients with epilepsy. So, we'll go to Chapter 8 today and review some of the common MRI and CT findings in patients presenting with epilepsy. Okay, let's move on to Chapter 8 here. So, Chapter 8 is Imaging in Epilepsy. And the question here is, you have to select, so, mesial temporal sclerosis is a finding that is quite common in patients with temporal lobe epilepsy. And if you identify a patient with mesial temporal lobe sclerosis, then basically this person can be a good candidate for epilepsy surgery, provided that the patient has not responded to medications. So let's take each slide at a time. So what you have to do is click on the image that shows mesial temporal sclerosis. So let's start with this first image. So this is a sagittal section, mid-sagittal section. You're looking at the corpus callosum here. You're looking at the midbrain, pons, medulla. This is the cerebellum. This is, these are the cerebral hemispheres. What you see here, this rounded oval-shaped lesion pressing on the splenium of the corpus callosum. So this is not mesial temporal sclerosis. This is uh, basically a meningioma that you can confirm after doing a gadolinium enhanced image. Okay, so what about this image here? This is a patient with poorly developed corpus callosum. So there is there is partial agenesis of corpus callosum. There is some herniation of the cerebellar tonsil. This is a patient with Chiari type 2 malformation. What about this patient here? So this is a coronal flare image of the temporal lobe. So this is the left temporal lobe and this is the right temporal lobe. The most striking finding on this MRI is this area where you see this arrow. This is as compared to the hippocampus on the right side, you see that the left hippocampus has lost its architecture. It is smaller in size and it is bright in signal. So this is left mesial temporal lobe sclerosis, not the right mesial temporal lobe sclerosis. And so obviously if you look at the last image, you are able to identify right mesial temporal lobe sclerosis the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle is more prominent here. There is a slight increase in signal and as compared to the left side, you can see the size of the hippocampus is smaller. So patients with hippocampal sclerosis can present with episodes of spacing out, blanking out, deja vu sensation. Typically, these seizures do not evolve into a secondarily generalized tonic-clonic seizure unless the patient suddenly stops taking their medication. So the answer to this question, select right mesial temporal sclerosis, we are going to select this one and if I click here, this is the right answer and we move on to the next slide. So the next question is to select an AV malformation. Let's start from the first slide. What you see here is basically a finding that you will rarely see in patients with epilepsy around the ventricles you see these nodules. These are the nodules that you can see in patients with periventricular nodular heterotopia. So periventricular nodular heterotopia is a diagnosis that is uh, mostly it's an X-linked condition and patients present with uh, a history of frequent abortions and seizures often temporal lobe type of a seizures but other seizures can be a manifestation as well. So when you see an MRI in patients with uh, seizures, make sure you do look at the ventricles and rule out periventricular nodular heterotopia. What do we have here? So if you compare the gyri on the left side and the right side, you see these on the right side this appears different. So this is what we call polymicrogyria on the right side with some area of dysplasia. So this dysplasia and polymicrogyria can be a presentation in patients with seizures. What about here? 
the most striking this is an axial section this is the right temporal lobe this is the left temporal lobe now we are looking at the lateral structure and what you see here is a lesion that is right very uh, superficial right anterior temporal lesion this is a cavernous malformation so if you see a cavernous malformation it can it can have a high association with patients with uh, different types of seizures depending on the location and then this gives us the last image and this is you see a lot of flow voids in this left parietal head region and this is an AV malformation. AV malformations can be associated with epileptic seizures. So the correct answer, select an AV malformation, this would be the correct answer and we will move on to the next slide. Okay, so select an MRI in tuberous sclerosis. What about here? You see increased signal in the white matter in the frontal head regions so this is something that is typically seen in patients with traumatic head injury so this is not tuberous sclerosis what about here you see flattening of the gyri here this is what's called lysencephaly and there are areas of dysplasia on both the right and the left hemisphere so this is not typical of tuberous sclerosis and looking over here these are multiple tubers in different area so this MRI is quite characteristic of tuberous sclerosis tuberous sclerosis and is an autosomal dominant condition can have uh, multiple cutaneous manifestations as well as characteristic MRI findings and this is basically what is called schizencephaly so you see an abnormal gray matter lining in both areas that connects the surface all the way to the ventricle and this is called schizencephaly so those are all four different types of pathologies that are associated with seizures but to select an MRI with tuberous sclerosis this is the right answer and we'll move on to the next slide so the only thing that is different in this one is uh, you have to select a penetrating brain injury the, this is a patient who had an accident where a metal spike went just adjacent to his eyeball all the way to the to his cortex and caused this damage so this is the penetrating head injury so this is the right answer but I'll show you another MRI so this is something when the surgeons do a selective amygdalohippocampectomy this is the pathway they take to scoop out the hippocampus and amygdala so this is a post surgical MRI this is a coronal flare image so if you've had a temporal lobectomy specifically if you've had a selective amygdala hippocampectomy this is the kind of an abnormality that your MRI will show and so the correct answer select penetrating brain injury this is the correct answer excuse me sorry this was the wrong answer this is the correct answer and we move on to the next slide so you have to pick up select cerebral venous sinus thrombosis this is the correct answer this is an MR venogram you see the sinuses are fine but the sinuses don't show up on this side so this person has a venous sinus thrombosis that's why you're not able to see the contrast on the right side the other images this is a patient who had a hemispherectomy so the whole hemisphere was surgically removed because this patient was having almost continuous seizures on a daily basis which were not responding to medications this is another example of periventricular nodular heterotopia that we just discussed and this is a patient with multiple strokes so this is a stroke on the right hemisphere this is stroke on the left hemisphere and patients who present with multiple strokes and frequent uh, miscarriages you can consider a diagnosis of antiphospholipid antibody syndrome so this is more for physicians that if you have a patient presenting with multiple strokes and has a history of several miscarriages consider investigating for antiphospholipid antibody syndrome so f this is pretty much it for the tutorial today I hope uh, you learned something out of it and I will see you at the next tutorial thank you very much